So there are a lot of things regarding Linux and technology in general that really bother me, that, that just don't make any sense to me. There are a lot of things that Linux applications are just general technology, web applications, mobile applications. There's, there's certain things that these programs either do or don't do that just really drive me nuts. They, I'm sure some of these probably make you guys a little angry too. Let's start with some of the things about Linux that have always kind of bothered me a little bit. As a longtime Arch Linux user, right? I use a lot of Arch Linux based distributions. I know a lot of you guys also do. And every single Arch Linux user installs packages from the AUR, right? Every single one of us, including probably all of the Arch Linux devs themselves, including all of the Pac-Man devs. They probably all have packages from the AUR installed. Why is Pac-Man not able to just install packages from the AUR for us? Why don't they have the AUR enabled out of the box by default on Arch Linux with Pac-Man. Why can't you just give Pac-Man a special command, right? Just don't install anything from the AUR without the user knowing it's from the AUR because they want to protect the user, right? I, I get that, but still, just allow Pac-Man to handle that for me. Why do I need to go download the package build myself and then run make package and go through all the hassle or, or I have to install a third party AUR helper like Yay or Paru? That has never made any sense to me. And I bet every single one of you Arch Linux users has probably never really made sense to you guys either. Another one that really drives me nuts is GUI file managers on Linux is your graphical file managers. Why don't they allow you to do what you want to do in that file manager? And specifically, anything that requires root privilege, sudo privileges. Like if I want to download some font from, I don't know, Google Fonts, right? And then I want to drop it in my GUI file manager in slash user slash share slash fonts. Why can't I do that? It, it, none of these GUI file managers will let me do that because they're going to throw up a, a, a dialogue saying, you don't have permission to do this. Okay, well, give me permission. Prompt me for my sudo password. Let me give you my sudo password, letting you know that, hey, I want you to do this. I'm give, giving the password to do this. I should have permission to do this. They don't do that, right? They, they're, again, they're trying to protect the user, I guess, from himself. They don't even want to give the user an option to play around in the root file system. And I think that is a step too far, right? In a lot of ways, I think it's that kind of stuff that really holds Linux back. Uh, another general Linuxy kind of problem, well, really another general computer kind of problem is we often have to wait too long for things on our computers. One of the things that really drives me crazy on Linux systems, those Linux systems especially that have systemd as an init system, sometimes when you're booting or restarting, whatever it happens to be, the start jobs or the stop jobs for systemd, sometimes you have to wait, right? Sometimes you have to wait 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 90 seconds sometimes for these start jobs or stop jobs because they're waiting on some other service to, to start or stop before they proceed to the next thing. Then it just takes way too long to boot up a computer or sometimes to shut down a computer while you're waiting for these start and stop jobs. And we shouldn't have to do that. And it's not just this kind of waiting with system D. I think one of the things copying large files around on Linux is also a big deal. Those of you that have ever, you probably all have done this, copying really large files to really slow media, right? So uh, a drive, uh, not necessarily like an SSD drive or even a hard drive sometimes to flash memory, things like this. You know, sometimes it will take forever and a day for these large files to copy. And while they're copying, your computer can't do anything. Kind of like the system D thing with the stop jobs and start jobs. You can't do anything with that computer until that finishes. Same thing with copying these large files. Your CPU is absolutely maxed and you can't do anything. You, all you can do is wait, you know, the next 5, 10, 15 minutes, however long it takes for that copy job to finally finish before you can actually do anything on that computer. And it's not just Linux related things that kind of drive me nuts. Obviously, it drives me nuts because I use Linux on a daily basis, but just general tech related issues, online services, some of them drive me nuts. One of the things that really drives me nuts is search engines. You can either use 
a, a big search engine like Google, which gives you really good results. The reason it gives you good results is because it knows everything about you. It's spying on you. It's data mining you. It's treating you really badly, right? And because if you're a privacy respecting person, like many of us are, you know, you're going to use some of the privacy respecting search engines out there. Things like DuckDuckGo and Brave Search and Cirque and Yacy. There, there's dozens of these things out there. And you go and use these privacy respecting search engines and the search results are terrible. Right? They're just terrible. And it's one of these things you're almost forced to make a decision. I can either have my privacy or I can have relevant search results, but I can't have both. And I hate that. One of the other things online that really drives me nuts, obviously, as a YouTube content creator and a consumer of YouTube content, how many times have you actually been on YouTube and you click on a video to listen to it and the audio is extremely low on a video because for whatever reason, the content creator had a problem, I guess, in the recording, didn't have his audio levels, the gain on the mics wrong or whatever it happens to be. He didn't do any kind of post-production work on it to actually raise his really low audio. He just recorded really low audio and then uploaded it to YouTube. And now you're watching this extremely low audio YouTube video. So you have to turn up the speakers to 150%, right? <laughs> to watch that one video. But then you go and watch the next video that did record at a normal audio level and now your eardrums are all busted and bleeding because that is a really loud video. And it's one of those things, why can't YouTube get this right? I understand not everybody is good at making audio and video content and people make mistakes with audio levels. But Google is a billion or trillion dollar company, really. And YouTube, of course, makes a lot of money. It's, it's a big operation. They've got tons of servers. Why can't YouTube on the back end uh, just go ahead and turn the gain up on these videos. You know, do some post-processing on a video. It, if it immediately recognizes, hey, the audio, the overall audio level on this video that you just uploaded is really low compared to what we typically get uploaded, uh, would you like us to fix it for you? Like, I think YouTube should just do that. I think, I know it requires a lot of power, computing power for YouTube to implement something like that, but they can afford it. And ultimately, I think it would be beneficial for their platform because it's something no one else does. I think everyone should do that. It's not just a YouTube thing. Every audio and video platform should do that. I go to the gym all the time. I listen to podcasts and one podcast will record at a normal audio level and the next one you know, the guy doesn't have the mic turned up. <laughs> Again, I'm listening on my phone and I've got to crank up the volume all the way to 100% on my phone to listen to this one podcast episode. And then the next one, I literally have to yank the, the headphones out of my ears because I'm about to go deaf when it starts playing the next one. I think these big podcast platforms like Spotify and you know the iTunes Store and Google Play Store, they could all fix this on their, their end with some kind of post-processing, or at the very least, when these people upload these really low audio podcasts or videos, whatever it happens to be, at least let these people know, hey, th this thing you just uploaded, the audio is not good. You probably should go back and fix it, you know, because a lot of people, when they upload these really uh, low audio quality uh, videos or uh, uh, podcasts, they, they don't actually know it's that way. And the reason is a lot of people just upload these things without ever really editing them in any way. So they never actually check how the recording went. I know that's kind of crazy, but you, you see that a lot, especially on YouTube. I see plenty of people that it's obvious they recorded a video and didn't even play it back to see if it recorded right. Because sometimes people upload videos with no audio at all. And you wonder, how in the hell could that happen? Well, the reason that happened is they recorded it. They didn't realize they didn't have any audio. The mic wasn't on or whatever. And they just uploaded the video. Right? And that's one of the things. That you guys that record video content or just audio only content, always go back and actually listen to the whole thing. I don't care how long it is. If it's a two-hour video, listen to the whole thing. Because you will be surprised sometimes 
things happen, right? You, you know, the camera dies in the middle of the recording, the microphone dies, whatever device you're using to record the audio dies. But I've ranted enough. What do you guys think about some of these uh, little rants that I just went on about these various issues with Linux and other uh, web-based platforms and things like that that we all have to deal with on a almost daily basis sometimes. And, you know, these things that really just shouldn't be an issue in our lives, but for some reason they are. And th these are things I think should have been fixed years ago in some cases. And I, I don't know, share your thoughts in the comments down below, not just on the things that I just complained about that shouldn't exist. What about some of the things that you deal with in Linux, uh, other operating systems on the web, web services, on mobile? What are some of the things that you deal with that you just really shouldn't have to. Anyway, peace guys.